When the female silk moth begins calling, she'll avert her pheromone gland from the tip of her abdomen. When she averts the pheromone gland, it actually inflates and looks something like a pair of balloons inflating on each side of the gland. When male moths detect the female pheromone, they quickly become excited, flapping their wings, searching for the source of the pheromone. After locating the female, the male moth will curl his abdomen and attempt to copulate with the female. One of the fundamental interests uh, of my research is to understand how genes and genomes interact with the environment to produce complex behaviors. And one of the systems that we work with is mating behavior in the Lepidoptera, Lepidoptera of moths and butterflies. My name is Kevin Warner, and I'm an assistant professor of entomology in the Department of Plant Sciences at Montana State University. Female moths produce attractive pheromone odors. These pheromones attract males for mating. Specific receptors in the male antenna detect these female-produced pheromones. We study the genes that are responsible for detecting that pheromone and that result in this behavior of males being attracted to the females for mating. The Latin scientific name for the silkworm is Bombyx mori. Silkworms have been domesticated for more than 5,000 years and they're used in sericulture to produce silk. In Japan and China, silkworms are a major industry. There are thousands of different strains of silkworms that are maintained commercially. Some companies in the US will import silkworm eggs and they'll be sold. Because silkworms are now used as feeder insects in the pet industry, you can purchase them quite easily. We use silkworms because they're easy to rear in the laboratory. They're sort of a lab rat of the insect world. We purchase silkworm eggs, and after those eggs hatch, we raise the caterpillars on diet that we mix up. The diet is basically powdered mulberry leaves. After the larvae have fed for about 30 days and they become mature, they spin a cocoon. Silkworms spin a cocoon as they transition to the pupal stage, on their way to becoming a moth. When the moth emerges from the pupa, the moth has to cut a hole in one end of the cocoon to emerge. We study the silkworm because it's convenient to raise, but also the genome has been sequenced, which is a great resource for functional genomic studies. Silkworms, uh, I find, are actually kind of fun to raise. Some people are a little bit squeamish around insects, but the silkworms will start off as tiny caterpillars and they grow quite large, uh, you know, an inch long. And they'll crawl around on your hand and they're, they're quite harmless. I think some people actually find silkworms kind of cute. We functionally characterize sex pheromone receptors with an instrument termed the Opus Express 6000A. This instrument allows us to screen hundreds of different odors against several different receptors to determine specific receptors that are activated by a particular odor. As it turns out, frog eggs, or more technically termed oocytes, have been used for many years in the pharmacology studies to study receptors. 
Once a person has cloned a receptor gene, that gene can be inserted into a frog egg, into an oocyte, and that oocyte will then express the receptor. It'll express the product of that gene. Receptors can be studied in frog oocytes because the receptors will cause an electrical potential across the membrane. An electrical potential across a frog egg membrane can easily be measured with electrodes because the frog egg is large compared to other types of single cells. When the receptor is activated, that potential across the membrane changes and you can see that as a dip in the steady state level that is maintained in the absence of an activation. In the big picture, the essence of this research is to have a much better scientific understanding of how genes and genomes interact with the environment to produce complex behaviors and complex ecology. These sex pheromone receptors play a very important role in the evolution of new species because they act as a barrier to mating. For that reason, Selection has been acting very strongly on this gene family. By better understanding the molecular genetic mechanisms and how they've evolved, this will provide us more broad insights into how genes and genomes evolve and interact with the environment. Because moss sex pheromones are highly attractive, they can be used in pest management strategies to attract male moths and also to disrupt mating. Sex pheromones used in pest management are attractive because they're a safer non-insecticidal alternative. In the future, by continuing to produce improved sex pheromones that can be used to manage important agricultural pests, we expect to contribute to the reduction of harmful insecticides used in the environment.